quick addendum here. I'm on uh, R1. It's booted up with uh, no host name, so it's using the default host name of router. I've specified the IP domain name to be packetlab.com, and I'm about to generate my RSA keys, which are the basic steps of uh, enabling SSH. Now, during the lesson, I told you, you know, again and again, that you need to have a host name specified, but I kind of said that was trivial because by default, you have a host name. It's router or switch, depending what platform you're on. And so my understanding was that it would concatenate router with, you know, in this case, .packetlab.com and use that to generate the keys. Let's find out um, if that's right or wrong. Please define a host name other than router. So you do have to actually define a host name. This isn't going to come up too often because I don't know of many networks where they just leave everything as router or switch. So I issued the uh, do show run include host name and you can see that there is a host name specified. It's router. You just can't use that. And I'm assuming that on a switch it'd probably give you the same error message as say use a host name other than switch. So while logically I would assume this could work, it doesn't. You need to actually go in and specify something other than the default host name of router or switch. Okay, and that's going to wrap it up. That was a fairly deep dive into at least the basics of configuring SSH on your Cisco devices. Doing this from the CLI line, there's going to be another lesson that specifies how to do this from the SDM, but concepts that you learn here are going to carry over to that quite obviously. Showed you a lot of configuration, a couple gotchas. The big thing to know is that the steps that you're going to want to follow you're going to need to follow at least are to well first off have an iOS that supports SSH again you can use the feature navigator on cisco.com to figure that out you're probably going to want a newer iOS which supports both SSH version 1 and SSH version 2 and that's anything after 1234 which you know doesn't really qualify as too very new in my book but the steps to configuring it is to set a host name then you're going to want to enable the IP domain name and that's with the IP domain name command and use like packetlab.com or whatever your organization's domain name is those two pieces are combined together to become the name of the RSA key which is the next bit that you're going to do and you're going to use that crypto key generate RSA and then you can specify the modulus or not to generate the key so at that point SSH is technically enabled now you're going to have to do a little bit more to get it to actually be functional so the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to either create a local username um, password combination for the local username database or if you're using AAA then just make sure that that it exists on your TACAX or RADIUS server and then you're going to want to go under the VTY lines and specify which login method whether that's going to be via AAA or in this case via the uh, local username password so those are really the steps that you absolutely have to do to have this up and functional. The optional step that I would say probably shouldn't be optional is to limit the input transport protocols on your VTY lines to just SSH so that the uh, telnet hole isn't open there anymore. And then I, again, I showed you some additional configuration on there, some gotchas, how to SSH from a Cisco device to another device, how the passing along of the username works, how the versioning works. So there's a whole lot in here, but the, that part was the basics. So uh, I apologize if this went long. I, I hope you're able to stay conscious through the whole thing. And as always, I thank you for joining me in the Packet Lab, and I hope this helps you on your route to becoming a network god.